Okay, so I'd like to show you a couple sequencer features real quick. Uh, the first one is just a general file selection thing. So I'm going to add an image sequence. Um, and uh, just going to navigate to the desktop, image sequence. And what you can do is actually, let's say these PNGs are mixed in with tons of other kinds of files. You can add, do a star.png, and it'll automatically select all of the um, of the files with that extension. Uh, and that's a really handy um, uh, little thing. Now, uh, here, right now, this is actually the correct aspect ratio. A lot of times you bring something in and it's completely distorted. Um, so my first step usually is, after I've imported something, to go to strip, set render size. And what that's going to do is if we go to shift F7, and look at the dimensions, it's going to set the dimensions of uh, the project to whatever that actual file is. So let's just say it comes in like this. Uh, then I'll go shift or strip, set render size. And as soon as we change the frame, you'll see that it is set correctly. Um, so now I'm going to open up the animatic edit and just show you a little bit of the color balance stuff that I've been doing. I'm um, going to change the scene to color grade uh, so that these are referencing AVI files. And um, basically, there's a really cool add on which allows you to take any property of the given strip and uh, allow you to apply that same property or values to other strips. And this is useful, especially when you're doing uh, color correction with um, the color balance uh, tools here. They're pretty basic, but um, are really nice to work with and so let's just assume that I wanted to give this entire uh, scene a really green feel. I want to I want to make it look like that. Um, by the way you can use shift to make this ultra sensitive. Um, what I'm going to do is go into the user preferences control alt u and go to the add-ons pane and I've already searched for chart but we are looking indeed for the property chart and you can just go ahead and enable it and whoops now at the bottom you'll see property chart and it's already got all these properties enabled but basically what I've done is if I've got this strip selected use color balance I can hover over uh, a property like lift and take a look at what the Python uh, line says sequence color balance dot lift and you can see here that I've got use color balance, color balance dot lift, color balance dot gamma, color balance dot gain. So these are properties that I've just basically copy pasted into here, and that becomes uh, what the chart is. Um, so let's just say I want, uh, let's go ahead and make this green as we've decided. Excellent, that looks perfect. Now I want to apply that to the rest of the scene. You see, as soon as I select it, uh, the, the chart increases to the selection and none uh, color balance is not enabled on these um, strips so the first thing I want to do is make that enabled now the gamma is the only thing I've changed so this one has a slightly more green hue and I'll just copy the gamma so right now if we look at this uh, shot it's pretty normal copy it over and now the gamma uh, is that green tint for the entire scene. So that's pretty pretty nifty. Now if I delete this, um, actually right now I'm sort of having a bug with property chart uh, where it completely disappears. But I could just say um, color underscore saturation. I could just add that to the property chart. I'm undoing <laughs> so that it doesn't disappear and say I'm going to type color underscore saturation and now you can see that saturation has replaced the color that uh, that we had before. So I can just make it completely desaturated, or just like these guys, and apply. And now saturation is down to zero for the entire thing. So it's a pretty handy tool, um, which I thought you should know about. So yep, that's it for this episode of Blender Tips with Colin Levy.